so we are going to do this continue with this session the second part of the session where we started last time on resolutions uh, why they fail why our resolutions fail and what we can do about it this is one of our experience as we saw last time that we new year comes and we all make the resolutions and within 15 days they all fail and sometimes we don't even know the reason why they fail today we want to have a look at why our resolutions don't work okay the intention is there then what goes missing we have the desire we have the intention to achieve in our lives what goes wrong that's what today we are going to look at and not only we are going to look at what goes wrong but uh, what can we do about it so today we are going to look at uh, can we start the uh, can we have the ppt the powerpoint can we put the powerpoint the right now we will start with the scripture verse from matthew chapter 11 verse 28 and verse 29 where jesus says come to me all those who labor and are heavy laden and i will give you rest i would like you to keep the word rest in mind okay verse 29 take my yoke upon you and learn from me purposely i have uh, made the word learn there in a little dark because that's the word we are going to focus on <laughs> we are going to learn learn how to fulfill our resolutions so jesus says learn from me let's look at the sequence the first verse 28 says come come to me jesus invites us to come to me and after we come to him look at the next thing he tells us is learn from me the word me comes here again come to me learn from me now that's what many of us we have not realized that when we come to the lord we have to come to the lord with an attitude to learn most of us we just uh, do only one thing we come to the lord and we pray we just pray and then we forget when we come to the lord of course we have to pray but after praying the next thing we have to start doing is we forget we have to learn why when we come to the lord the lord promises us rest but when we pray when we learn from him we it says look at the last part of the verse we receive so now if you look at jesus says learn from me for i am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls the word rest comes in verse 28 and it also comes in verse 29 let's understand what does this word rest means now many of us will say rest means i i will be having peace i will be having calmness of mind yes that's that's one meaning but it's not the main meaning one of the things we must do is when we are studying the scriptures we must do is we must learn to compare scripture with scripture to understand the meaning what do i mean by that we take the word rest here and we try to find out where in the bible again is the word rest given and we will find if you open to the letter to the hebrews chapter 4 the word rest comes there again and the author there talk is talking about the rest that god wants us to enter and he goes on to talk about the people of israel entering the land of rest what is he saying after the people of israel were delivered and i want to dwell a little on this word because first we must understand this word and how this word is uh, what i can say related with our resolutions so here the author says the people of israel after they were delivered from the land of egypt god god brought them out god brought them out of egypt so that he will bring them in the land of canaan now this is something very important for us to understand it was not only just that god brought them out what was egypt for them slavery problems suffering god brought them out of egypt so that he will bring them in the land of canaan and this land of canaan is called the land of rest in hebrews chapter 4 now the question is what was the land of rest for the people of israel and it what was the land of rest 
it was the plan of god for their lives now that's what the word rest actually means the plan of god for their lives god delivered them from egypt brought them out of sin of bondage slavery suffering so that he will bring them in the land of canaan that was god's original plan just not just to bring them out but to bring them in the land of canaan so the land of canaan the land of rest symbolically means the plan of god now now let's put this in that verse again where jesus says come to me all those who labor and are heavy laden why are we heavy laden because we are following our own plans that's why we are burdened we are living lives on our term we are living lives as we want and that's why we we are burden life becomes like a burden and so jesus says if you come to me i will give you rest now now let's put that into context he says you are following your own plans and that is what is making you burdened i will give you rest i have a plan for your life now god has a plan for my life in verse 28 in verse 29 i will find rest i have to find that plan how do i find god is giving i have to find between giving and finding the word learn comes there the word learn comes there where jesus says learn from me it's only when we learn that we will find rest that's what jesus is saying now last time i spoke to you about that there are three ways we all live our lives we live our lives you know the one of the ways god wants us to live our life is the designed way okay designed life i spoke to you about a designed life if you remember god has a plan what is a designed life a designed life is a planned life god itself has a plan for our lives now the way many of us operate as if you know like god's plan or god's will is something very blurred for us you know we don't know we just leave it to him completely we don't do anything on our part and we sometimes say you know by faith now if you look at many things in your life if you look at how your career happened not by accident you planned it you planned every step what you are going to do with your studies how does your marriage happen i hope so none of you said you know my marriage will happen by faith you know now i'm not talking here against faith please don't misunderstand me but sometimes we make faith as a substitute for responsibility so says i'll get married by faith one day you know i'll get married by faith i'll just go to the church and the girl whom i'm going to get married or the guy whom i'm going to get married he will come there by faith the priest will be there by faith to celebrate the mass the caterers will come there by faith you know the dj will come there by faith people you know you don't need to send an invitation all of them will come by faith i hope so you are getting my point every detail of these things are planned and so god himself has a plan for us now how do we discover that plan when we learn <coughs> to achieve resolutions in our life we need to get into the process of learning and i'm going to use the word learn as an acronym so what does the word rest stands for the word rest stands for god's plan for my life and i have to find it god is giving it to me when i come to him god is giving it to me i have to find it how do i find it when i start learning now we take the word learn and this is where i'm going to break it into an acronym where jesus says learn and we are going to look at you know we we are not able to achieve our resolutions basically because we make them i want to i want you to uh please listen to this point very carefully we make them but after we make them we don't get into the learning process how to achieve them we think just because i made a resolution i will achieve it sorry you are wrong just because you desire it you have it no just because i decided i will have it no decision is the first step but there are other steps after that that i i just don't know and all the years what we have been doing i have decided to stop this i have decided to achieve this and we think just because i have decided it will happen now this is the first mistake 
we all make where we think only desire and decision is enough it's not after a desire and decision the next step is learn learn how you are going to achieve it we don't even take time to learn how we are going to achieve it we think it will just happen we will just have it here jesus talks about he has given us rest and but we will not find it if we are not learning and so how can we achieve our resolutions if we are not willing to learn so after decision our next step should be i am going to learn let me give an example i want to talk to i am going to give a lot of examples here so that this concepts become simpler simplify you know they i just want to simplify this concepts remember all that i am going to share with you is scientific huh? it's not just scriptural it, though it is from scripture i have taken it from scriptural but these are all the scientific facts about resolutions achievement i have been doing this for the last 30 years in my life and i have seen the success that it gives so they are scientific they are proven principles that work okay so let's have a look at that you know we just decided you know i'm going to start praying we take a resolution you know from new year i'm going to start praying you know i'm going to spend time in prayer now we just decide and the next new year you know first of jan we get up in the morning we sit for prayer and we think just because i have decided for prayer i will i will have a good prayer time because i have decided now what happens is i have decided but just because i have not learned i have not learned about how to pray how to spend that time with the lord uh how to deal with distractions that come in prayer time okay how to deal with dryness that comes sometimes when you are uh, when your prayer life starts growing so because i have not learned all these things what happens is the moment i start getting distracted the moment my prayer time goes dry i stop now that's where the problem happens because we have not learned how to pray how to deal with the obstacles because we have not learned we stop that's what happens to all our resolutions we decide but after decision the next step should be learn learn how to achieve them decision itself is not enough <laughs> learn how you going to achieve them so today we want to reflect on that word learn you know what are all those things that we need to learn in order to achieve so we want to look at use the word learn as an acronym and we are going to look at what it exactly what the what do we need to do is when we say about that we have to learn so let's start can we have the next slide let's start with the word l okay the first word let's start with the word l l e a r n here we have the word learn and where jesus talks about learn from me can we go to the next slide let's look at what are some of the things we need to learn okay so let's take the word l what does l stands for uh let's go to the next slide please what does the word l stand for the word l itself stands for first learn the first thing we need to start doing after we make a resolution is we need to learn now here i would like to share an example once again another example uh Uh, eight years uh, now 10 years ago it was when i was 42 at that time and i remember i had gone for a health check up and yearly check up that i do you know because you don't know what outside you may look all fine but you don't know what all is happening inside your body and one of the wise thing to do is you know do your yearly check up so that you know if there is anything wrong you just know it well in advance so i often i started doing that from the age of 40 one of my mentors suggested you know do that at the age of 42 there were some problems that happens in my health some issues came in the blood, in the report that i took the full report that i took there were some issues and i just asked uh, the doctor who was looking at the report i says are they serious he says no now they are not serious now they are not serious but if if you don't do anything about them after the next 10 years you know in the next 10 years you may rip rest in peace he says they will get serious in the next 10 years and i just decided it uh, though it never gave me a shock because immediately nothing was going to happen but then he said you know in the next 10 years and of course now today all the 10 years are over i'm still healthy 
then I asked him what is the solution for that. He said the solution for you now you have to start uh, thinking of going on a diet and you have to start your exercise routine. You have to start doing your exercise. I tried doing it at home. Within one two months, within one two weeks itself, I gave it up. I realized I needed to go to and join the gym. I went and joined the gym. I thought joining the gym, I will start building up health. Now, when I joined the gym, I forgot I have to learn the exercise first. You know, in the gym, the first one month they just focus on one thing: learn, learn every exercise for each part of the body. Now, I thought you just go there, lift up weights. You just you just keep doing something, and you will be fine. And I did that for one month. I saw no transformation. I asked one of the trainers, you know, sir, you know, I'm doing doing it for the last one month, and no transformation is happening. How come? He says, you, "Have you just seen what you are doing? You just come here because we cannot tell you anything. You are just doing what you want. You should have first decided to learn." and what i did was i took a decision he says after you have i realized that after i took a decision to be healthy i had to learn about health i had to learn about exercise i had to learn about diet so the next step was i hired that trainer for the next 3 months i had to pay a fee for him and i hired him for the next 3 months and i just hired him why so that i will learn and it took me one and a half month just to learn what i've been doing for the last 10 years correct form correct exercises the after decision making the next step was learn and so the word l stands for learn now let's have a look at what are some of the things i need to start learning can we have all the points together of learn yeah the first thing we need to learn is first get clarity we saw this point last time what do i mean by get clarity be very clear what you want to achieve be very clear what you exactly want don't be specific okay don't uh, be specific don't be general sometimes we say you know i i want good health you know what does that look like get clarity what exactly you want i want to be financially be stable Uh, how much money you need to be financially stable come on get clarity get figures you know, i want a strong prayer life uh, uh, what does a strong prayer life look like how do you know you have got one so get clarity be clear what you really want to be and what you really do that's the first step please get clear because our brains work in such a way they need clarity because when we get clear then the brain helps us to focus on that okay secondly we also need to analyze as we are learning the first thing is get clear what we want analyze why i want it why that why is very important so motivational word okay why let me give you an example here as i spoke about my health issues i says you know uh, why why i need why i need to start exercising why why i need to start exercising why i need to go to the gym every day and i realized this and this was one of the line my trainer told me in the first month last 10 years i keep telling myself about it is to often tell me sir uh, in hindi is to tell me body ko abhi pain do okay body ko abhi pain do give your give your body pain now or your body will give you pain later in installments so is better give your body pain now now this principle of pain pain i realized that i have a choice either the pain of exercise or the pain of sickness one pain i have to choose now that's what life is all about it's not pain and peace pain and pain pain of exercise or pain of sickness pain of lifting up those weights or pain later your body has become a weight <laughs> which you are finding it difficult to lift up okay you are finding it difficult to move analyze why you want it and psychology tells us here while we are analyzing it we have to look at the word reward principle we have to follow the reward principle what do i mean by that they say there are two kinds of reward internal reward and external reward we have to think about the rewards what are the benefits what is the internal reward we get the internal reward we get by achieving our resolution is internal satisfaction 
okay we get a sense of achievement we get a sense of satisfaction we get a sense of fulfillment we feel fulfilled that's the internal award of course the external award sometimes that psychology talks now i scripturally i don't agree with this but psychology talks about external rewards can be you will get recognition you will get fame uh, you will get health okay external rewards now psychology tells us if you have to choose between one of those motivations either internal and external they say internal motivation is very healthy because now you are it's coming from within you external motivation is dangerous why you want people to like you uh, sometimes someone better than you can come and they will start liking that person and that time you will start feeling envious jealous or you may break down so that's why external rewards we have to keep them away as far as possible internal but we need to analyze so the when we are learning the first thing we need to learn is what do i actually want and second why why do i want why do i want a strong prayer life i want a strong prayer life because my relationship with jesus is the most important thing ultimately my end of life is that my relationship with god when i'm going to die i'm going to be with the lord so if that's the goal of my life that's something that the end of my life i better start working on it now so we need to get into the why first get clear and second why we want it now let's look at the third thing we need to learn so first is in learning the word l stands for learn get clarity second analyze why you want it third realize that what you want to achieve is not impossible please realize that what you want to achieve is not impossible but it may be difficult ah now that's what we need to understand what i want to achieve i need to realize this is not impossible but it may be difficult now here is where we have not understood the difference between the word difficult and impossible you know our brains are trained in such a manner that anything that is difficult we immediately say oh uh, impossible you know i won't be able to do that come on be practical it is possible but it's difficult it's difficult and so that's the thing we need to realize that but not impossible but not impossible it is difficult but not impossible now when we tell our brains you know it is difficult but not impossible the mind gets ready at least it doesn't give up it says it's difficult now i need to start getting motivated to go ahead and do it in spite of it being difficult so that's the third thing we need to realize realize that what i want to achieve is not impossible but it may be difficult yeah difficult to get up in the morning and sit for prayer but not impossible okay uh, difficult to pick up my bag and go to the gym and not impossible difficult to start reading and studying the scriptures yeah but not not impossible we must train our brain because our brain is such that anything that is difficult anything that is painful anything that gives us pain it's immediately starts telling us don't do it don't do it you know you you won't be able to do it this is difficult this is this is impossible next time tell your brain yeah uh i like to change here it's 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 possible dear but difficult but it's possible so we need to realize that we also need to realize that if i'm going to achieve my resolutions now this is what i need to learn now see this is something we need to learn get clarity analyze why i want understand the difference between i need to learn this the difference between possible impossible and difficult okay what is impossible what is difficult and the next i need to learn that if i am going to achieve my resolutions it will require now please listen to this because the next part of all the teaching is going to be on this point i require new methods and new new methods or new structure i require a method new method or i require a process in the in the companies they call it systems we require systems if you going to achieve those sales we need to have systems in place 
So I need to have the methods. I need to have the process, or I need to have the systems and accountability. Not just systems, but accountability. Now let me give you. Have you ever seen that in your work? So many, so much stress we face at our workplace. So much difficult time we go through at our workplace. Whatever work you are doing, but yet you are doing it. Yet you are doing it. Why you are doing it? Because you are in a process. You are supposed to finish that project in that particular period of time. The pro company has put you in a process, and they are paying you for the process. Second, you are accountable. There is a sword of accountability hanging on your head. That is called a boss. <laughs> He's hanging like a sword on your head, and he is there to behead you, you know, emotionally if you don't finish your project on time. So process and accountability helps you with all the difficulty, with all the suffering, with all the pain, and with all the stress that you go through. You yet complete your project on time. You see, if we really observe our daily life, so much to learn. and what we do we have not planned the process we have not planned to whom i am going to be accountable and because we have not planned the process we have not planned our accountability what happens is within a short period of time we need we give up our resolutions so now uh, what is the process what is the structure i need to put myself into now that is what is important i need to learn what kind of a structure if i am going to achieve this resolution i need to put myself in the process uh, what is that process i need to get into if i am going to achieve that resolution what is that process i need to get into what is the structure i need to get into what is the structure let me give an example you like to play a game youngsters you know sometimes they come and tell me i i want to play cricket i want to play football i want to achieve i want to make a career in that i says uh, sitting at home you won't make the next step is get into the structure come on go and join a football academy a football class a cricket class that's the next step put yourself in a structure put yourself in the process now this is the next thing we know we 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 have not thought about the process we have not thought about the structure we have not planned about it we have not even learnt about it and what we do we think just because i made this new year resolution to pray to be fit in the body to have financial stability it will happen it won't happen i need to think about the structure i need to think about the process what is the process what is the method i'm going to use to achieve this and along with that accountability now why accountability what accountability does basically accountability is all about surround i need to surround myself with people okay with people who are growing in that area i'm going to give an example here i need to accountability means i need to surround myself with people who are going to grow in that area now let me give an example uh please don't get put off i'm going to talk about my gym experience more in this sharing in my first two months of gymming i struggled you know why because i was in a batch i was in a batch of lazy some lazy gongs they will hardly go and lift up weights and do exercise and talk a lot and just waste time and they we, we and i joined that batch and i also joined their gang and i thought you know just going to the gym you will become fit you know you just enter the gym as if the gym is a magic place sometimes we think you know a prayer meeting is a magic place just go there and you will change just go for the retreat sit there and you will change hello even the faith uh, faith if you have studied about our faith it says we require a disposition of the heart so that god can work in our life without that disposition god won't work and so i had this bunch of lazy gongs there you know who who will who who were just uh, uh, i will not say they were discouraging in fact they were very encouraging they were avoiding pain talking a lot taking long breaks and after one hour ah we did exercise i suddenly started feeling guilty and i realized if i am going to be with this batch with this goal in mind of becoming fit i won't and so what i did was i took the schedule of our gym 
and suddenly observed there is a batch till today last 10 years i am in this batch i suddenly saw the schedule where our trainers in the gym the trainers who come in the morning along with the owner of my gym who is a strong bodybuilder uh, or what i can say my great motivation motivator he he does exercise in a particular time and i had to schedule my timing to that time and i decided to go in that time they gave me the permission you can come i says you know i just he says no that's a trainer's time but i says i will just come and i will just do my exercise in fact one of the trainer is training so uh, somehow we will coordinate and they allowed me till today i am in that batch why i found myself i started getting motivated just observing those people unimaginable things i you know i got into i forgot i'm growing old <laughs> i was always having fear i must not lift up weights beyond this beyond this kilos i must not go and i remember the last time before pandemic i reached the squats in this batch that did a squat with 160 kilos on my shoulders i never imagined i will do that it was it was with whom you are who are the people are you accountable to the right kind of people sometimes in the prayer group we have people you know we go and tell them you know i am struggling with my prayer time and they also tell us the same thing i am also struggling praise god we are in the same boat yeah same boat sinking boat <laughs> i am sinking you join me you also sink along with me or you are sinking i join you let's sink together sinking boat it's going down i need to change my boat <laughs> i need to get into the boat who are challenging themselves now today i know there is a complaint uh, where are these kinds of people yeah they are there if they are not there come on you be one <laughs> you be one so that other people can join you and this is what we need to learn we not only need to learn clarity first clarity what are some things we need to do l stands for learn learn means first get clarity what exactly i want second why analyze why i want it why i want it what will i feel what will i lose if i don't get it third realize that what i want is difficult but not impossible it's difficult but not impossible it's possible and fourth i need to learn that if i'm going to achieve this resolution i require new process i require new method i require new structure and i require accountability now this was going to be the most important part of the teaching i hope so you have you have taken down this points because that's what exactly you need to sit down and work now let's go to the word a the word l e sorry the word e let's go to the word e the word e stands for extract let's go to the word e and look let's look at it it stands for the word extract now what does the word extract means i have not written anything there extract basically means what i am learning i'm going to give you examples here <laughs> what i am learning remember in the first step what i was learning i take things from there like what i'm learning is logos you know you know if you have heard the teaching on the word of god the word of god has two words for the word of god logos and rema what is logos the whole word of god the whole bible what is rema <coughs> rema is what is applicable to me what is god speaking to me that is rema now that's what the word extract means as i am learn process you know i am learning that you know to achieve this goal these are four five processes i have these are some of the structures i have these are some of the people i can get accountable with these are some of the people i can start getting accountable with these are some of the goals i need to set now there are some people there are some structures there are some goals now i extract what among this some goals what are those goals that are going to be my goals among this so many structures which is the structure i am going to take and put it in my life which is the process among all these processes which is the process i am going to put myself into that is what the word extract means all that i am learning i take out what i am going to apply what i am going to do now that's what the word extract means we do that even in the word of god even as you are hearing this teaching sometime when we hear the teaching hear the speaker but as you are hearing the speaker extract 
what is applicable to you not everything that the speaker is speaking is applicable to you but something will be applicable that is what we call rema that is for me that word is for me that applies to my life so that is the next step after i learn the word l i need to extract what is applicable to me so l stands for learn e stands for extract what is applicable to me which structure which process which people i need to get accountable to who are the people i need to start getting accountable to i need to start putting that process in place extract the process extract this learning and that's what we do now here one of the problems we face is this is happening sadly to many of us in the renewal we are just we are just into this learning spree you know uh, one program after another attending one program after another attending one retreat online retreat after another hearing one talk after another and extracting nothing and after we hear that talk we feel so motivated you know we sit ah as if we are going to achieve that we have not even extracted anything what was happening we are happy we feel nice after listening to sessions like this on achieving our resolutions building a strong personal prayer life studying the word of god and we immediately think now now it's going to happen in my life hello it's not what have you extracted what have you from that talk what have you taken for yourself that's why after the session is over one of the healthy habits is sit with yourself for 5 minutes please start doing this exercise sit with yourself for 5 minutes after the session is over and say after all that i heard uh, what i'm going to take for me from this session what what's there for me what i'm going to take for me that i'm going to apply it in my life take 5 minutes your family will excuse you for that what we do after we take down the nail praise the lord hallelujah jesus is lord now and forever now and forever jesus is lord peace be with you brothers and sisters and after that as it was in the beginning it's now and ever shall be world without an amen i am the same yesterday today and forever no extracting extracting is a principle i do that quite often let me give you an example recently you know i put myself on a daily program i call it a feeding program feeding my soul it's a feeding program i follow for my own soul this is not for my preaching ministry it's for my own growth and so one of the i was listening to a very solid session one hour such a solid session and everything was important in that session ultimately i took two points i said let me just sit after the talk was over i decided to sit and i said i need to extract and i extracted two principles one of them started blessing me the priest was talking and he was saying something like this you know everything is grace which means the problem that happens with you is the grace of god the suffering that you are going through is the grace of god everything is grace nothing is accident what does it mean it's an opportunity to grow in sainthood it's a opportunity to grow in holiness now that one point that i extracted changed my whole perspective the way i see things especially not those those things called not so good things started becoming meaningful everything is grace that extraction today is benefiting my soul i i'll tell you i after that one lesson i have not heard the next lesson why i i just want to take a little more time to make this things very personal in my life extract learn to extract are you doing that or are you just listening to the whole thing nothing is going in here but hearing your thing hearing from here and coming out of here nothing is going in here and nothing is going in here for if things have to go in here and if things have to reach my heart it has to be extracted now after extracting 
So first is learn. L stands for learn. E stands for extract. And we saw what all things we need to learn. Because if we don't learn these things, we won't achieve our resolutions. And after that, we extract what exactly I'm going to uh, put it into practice, what exactly I'm going to start doing. The word A stands for, let's go to the next slide. The word A stands for the word act. A means we have to act. A is equal to act. Now let's look at what are some of the acts. Can we have all the points of the word act? Okay, let's look at what we do. What are we to act? Number one, first with the point that I have not put is get commit yourself to get in the process and stay in the process. That is what I have to act. Now remember I told you I have to extract. I have to first uh, be clear. What is the process I am going to put to it? What is the structure? Now once I know the process and I know the structure, remember the resolution that I am going to achieve is the end. But the process, I have a process to achieve that. Okay. To achieve that, first I need to get into the process. Example, I have to go and start, I have to go in and join the gym. Process, structure. Then I had to commit to stay into the process, stay there. Don't just join and get out, stay there. You know, getting in is a very easy thing. Staying there is the most difficult thing. Now let's look at why we don't stay. The rest of the points we talk about, you know, we all start, but we don't stay. Why? Number, let's look at some of the obstacles that we need to be aware that these are all the things that will happen to me. Okay, I want you to become aware. These are some of the things that will happen to me when I start. Now, if you tell your brain, these are some of the things that are going to happen to you, expect them to happen to you. When they happen, the brain says, ah, it was going to happen. And you, you planned what you will do when this happened. Let's look at what are some of the things that will happen once we get started. <coughs> now, please make a note of all these things that are going to happen. That we start, you know, we start, we start our prayer time, we start reading the word of God, we start studying the word of God, we take our spiritual life seriously. And then what happens? Okay, the next thing happens is we forget, we sometimes forget that we, we don't feel motivated. Or I will tell you, sometimes some of us have a problem to start only. We know, we know the process, we know the structure, but we are not getting in. Let me give an example. Uh, there was a guy, I'm talking here the spiritual points now, who says, you know, you know, you know, Brother Victor, once my prayer life was so strong. You know, I used to get up four o'clock in the morning and is to sit with the Lord till six o'clock. I will spend time. Afterwards, you know, I don't know what, what went wrong. Uh -huh. I don't know what went wrong. That's the very big mistake that you don't know. Okay. I don't know what's went wrong. And today I'm finding it so difficult to pray. Uh, I have stopped praying. Now I says, but you need to start. You no, know, I'll start. I'll, I'm waiting to be motivated. You know, I'm waiting to feel motivated. The word that uses, I'm not feeling that motivation that I felt after I came from the retreat. Uh, I'm waiting. Once I feel motivated, I will start. Now let me give you the science, scientific uh, description of motivation, how we get motivated. Science tells us, don't wait to feel motivated. Okay, this is scientific. Don't fail. To, don't wait to feel motivated. Start. And as you start, you will start getting motivated. How? As you start, you will suddenly realize, oh, this is not as difficult as I thought. Or I will realize, I will start seeing small, small improvements in my life, small, small changes in my life. And that will start motivating me. Start. Now, Jesus also said this. Jesus also said this in Revelation chapter 2. He's talking to the church of Ephesus and he says, tells them in that church, he tells them, this thing I've got against you. What he has got against him? That you have forsaken the love you had at first or you have lost your first love. Lost your first love. Now, Jesus says, I want that love to come back. Now, look at the advice he gives. He first tells him, repent. Okay. He says, first, change your mind. Repent. The word change your mind simply repent means simply means now decide. Please decide that you want that first love back. But after repent, he tells you what he says. He doesn't say feel. He says, do the works. Look at the word do. Circle the word do. Do the works you did at first. Whether you feel it or not, do what you did at first. When you came after the retreat, what you did at first. You got up at 4 o'clock, get up at 4 o'clock now. You sat one hour for prayer, 
do that. What you did first, do that. Why Jesus knew action, you know, action brings motivation. Okay, not motivation brings action. He says, as you do it, as you start doing it, you will start feeling it. That's why Jesus said, do the works you did at first. Do. Now, there is a difference between spiritual hunger. I'm here talking about motivation and physical hunger. We need to understand the difference. Let's look at only two differences I'm giving you. If you want to be, what, what must you do to feel physically hungry? Simple. What must you do to feel physically hungry? Simple. Don't eat. <laughs> Don't eat. Don't eat for five days. See, oh, what a hunger you will get. <laughs> ah, now, what you need to do to get spiritually hungry? Opposite. Start eating spiritually. Don't remain hungry spiritually. Don't stop your prayer life. Start your prayer life. Start getting into the word. As you start your prayer life, as you start getting into the word and you start getting consistent, you, the hunger will come. Physical hunger comes by not eating. Spiritual hunger comes by start eating. That's the difference. They are completely opposite. Physical hunger goes by eating. You want your physical hunger to go? Don't eat. Don't eat. It will go. Oh, sorry. Physical hunger goes by eating. You want your hunger to go? Eat. After you eat, your hunger goes. Spiritual hunger goes. Spiritual passion goes when you stop eating. When you are not doing your prayer time. Now, if you want your spiritual hunger to come, follow the advice of science. Follow the advice Jesus gives. Do. Don't wait to feel. And what advice did I give that guy? He says, you know, I'm willing. I says, please don't wait. You have wasted seven, eight months in waiting. Start doing. I'll tell you, just start doing. But I don't feel. Just start doing. Act. Just start acting. Initially, it will look like you are acting superficially. Don't worry. Feelings will follow. Feelings will follow. So please realize that this is the obstacle we are going to face. This first obstacle is I have not even started. Why I have not started? I am not feeling motivated. And how will I feel motivated? Start. Come on, start. Start doing. Don't feel motivated to sit for prayer. Start sitting for prayer. Start reading the word of God. Remember, spiritual hunger comes by eating. Only physical hunger comes by not eating. So don't, please don't confuse this too. Spiritual hunger, you want to get spiritually hungry? Start eating. Start eating. Start doing those things. Spiritual hunger will come. So that's the first obstacle we face. Motivation. The second obstacle we face is there comes a stage. Once we get motivated and we start. But there comes a stage. Now, please listen. This happens in every area. It happens in marriage. It happens in job. It even happens in your resolution. There comes a time when you are doing, when you are, when you are on, in the process of achieving your resolutions and suddenly one day the feelings of motivation go. This happens even in married life. When we got engaged, we were having such good romantic feelings for each other. What happened after two years? God knows. Scientifically, I'll tell you. Scientifically, what happened? Science has proved that romantic feelings don't remain for more than two years. Scientific. That's what happened. So they have gone. So we will face this phase that one day, you know, I will not feel like getting up for prayer. Uh, I will not feel like getting up to or sit to read the word of God and study the word of God. Uh, I will not feel like going and joining my prayer meeting. I will, I will, I will feel. Please don't do yourself. I don't think so. I'll I, I, I will not feel that. I, I, I will feel for prayer. I will feel for the word of God. I will feel committed for the prayer meeting. No, no, no. Please, please. I won't feel like going for that intercession. So boring. Please tell yourself these feelings will come. Now what we do? We tell our brains the next thing. What will I do when they come? What will I do when I don't feel like getting up for prayer? What will I do? What will I do if one day, now we have not planned all this. That's why our resolutions go for a toss. Uh, what will I do when I don't feel like going to the gym? 
and i'll tell you what i told my brain i am going to go i type that program there when i don't feel like going i am going to pick up my bag and go when i don't feel like sitting for prayer i am going to get up take my cup of coffee and sit i am going to still do it now we have not planned for this we never thought that you know we thought that we will always feel always we will feel no there comes a phase when the motivation goes there is no such thing remember there is no such thing as feeling highly motivated that you are we are highly motivated all the time there are sometimes there no feelings of motivations are there but we don't go by feelings we go by action faith is action james talks about it faith you have faith show it come on i am going to get in action i have a priest friend here who tells me sometimes i don't feel compassion on that person but i yet reach out action for comes first i must reach out it doesn't mean i don't feel compassion i must not reach out i still reach out and compassion comes later action comes so we have to get we have to remember that when i don't feel motivated i need to maintain and i need to sustain my commitment i need to maintain and i need to sustain my commitment can we have the next slide the word r what does the word r stands for the word r stands for reflect now what do i reflect the word reflect simply means sometimes we will fail in our goals please include failure failure is a part of achieving your resolution and what are some of the failures sometimes i may stop or sometimes i have got into the wrong process like you know i went to the gym but my timing was wrong i got among the in the wrong batch and so i had to do adjustments i had to change we need to we need to read that sometimes i may be getting up for prayer in the morning take for example i am getting up at 5 o'clock and i go to sleep why uh, i go to sleep in my prayer time people say that sometimes i get up at 5 o'clock brother but 15 minutes and i slept i said what time you go to sleep i went to sleep at 2 o'clock now what's that how can you you know you are going to sleep at 2 o'clock getting up at 5 o'clock anyone will sleep for prayer come on study yourself something is missing there something is not proper there so include failure include relapse we are very good at that we start and then we stop relapse and this has happened with me also in the last 10 years there are sometimes i have stopped i went through a surgery in 2018 two months break i got and i'll tell you what a fighting it was to go back to the gym you know after that two months break relapse but i had decided that one day relapse will happen i never knew how it will come but i was ready for relapse what will i do when i relapse example you got malaria you got well when you got malaria you got well then again you got a relapse what you did went to the doctor ah you know said oh god this is the third time it's happening i better stop it's no use of going to the doctor this thing keeps on coming so it's no use of going to the doctor you know what will happen rip no matter how many times relapse happens we have to get up and we have to start so there is going to be a time please include this reflect reflect on what will i do when i when fail when i fail i will analyze why i failed tell your brain i will analyze maybe i am sitting for the wrong time in prayer maybe i am i'm i'm in the wrong batch in the gym i will analyze why i felt when i relapse when i have stopped and i don't feel motivated what will i do i will get back into the process analyze the reason why my resolutions are not working reflect the word r stands for reflect and as i do this four things the last and i like to end up with this the word n means after relapse okay after failure the word n means next it simply means start again start again in fact there is a series one priest did uh, not a priest it was a saint who who i i really i i don't know the name of that saint but he he used to always i i remember that one word in his sermon he says no matter how many times you fail please tell yourself start again and maybe right now you have stopped believing in resolutions right now you have stopped believing in making resolutions because you have failed to keep them no problem please start 
again. I hope so. This teaching helps you not only to make resolutions. That's the first part. The second is learn how to achieve them. And as you use the word "learn" as an acronym, the word "L" stands for learn. The word "E" stands for extract. What is in it for me? The word "A" stands to act. Don't feel to be motivated. Start acting. You will feel motivated. Remember, there will come a time where you won't feel motivated. That's what the word "L" stands. Uh, "A" stands for the words "E" "L" "A" "L" "E" "A" "R" stands for reflect. Reflect why failure. Reflect what will you do when you fail. Reflect to do when you fail. Reflect what will you do when you relapse. Reflect why you relapsed. Learn from it. And the word N is next. What is the next? Start again. Please don't give up because God is not giving up on you. Please start again. God bless you.